is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about solids, CE 3303. We're in chapter 12, which is deflections of beams and shafts. Now, section 12.1 was spent in the book developing the relationship of the elastic curve. The elastic curve is the shape of the beam's deflection measured at the longitudinal axis along the centroid, the line of the centroid. And so it was a very, very elegant derivation of the relationships that exist here. And what we come up with is, after some calculus and some nice math, is this very neat relationship between loading, shear, moment, slope, and deflection. Now if I've got a beam, I've got to establish a couple of more sign conventions or uh, coordinates. I want to say that deflection is this letter V measured positive up from the longitudinal axis. And then I'll talk about theta, which is the slope of the elastic curve. Now the book talks about how it's helpful to draw that elastic curve and we can use some conditions to establish what shape that elastic curve has and uh, we talked about how at a pin or a roller there's no deflection and the relationship of the curvature of that elastic curve to the moment, the sign of the moment. We talked about how moment positive moment makes the beam curve concave up like this one or negative moment makes the beam turn concave slope concave down on the bottom side so it's helpful to draw the moment diagram sometimes if you if you got a complicated loading situation to fit to figure out what the elastic curve is going to look like it's very important to visualize that because we're going to apply it. Okay, after a bunch of uh, calculus, I get this neat relationship between the loading, the shear, the moment, the slope, and the deflection curve. What I'm after is this deflection curve, lowercase v, is a v is a function of x and for most of the time we're going to measure X from the left end of the beam like over here. Okay, when we were talking about deriving uh, moment and shear diagrams we also had the part about the equations of moment and shear as we uh, will show in a little example down here but you'll remember that we had the loading is some function W of X and the integral of that is equal to the shear and the integral of the shear function is equal to the moment. We're going to carry that two steps further. The integral of the moment diagram is equal to the slope diagram and the integral of the deflection of the slope diagram is equal to the deflection diagram. Or the other way of putting it is that the deflection, the first derivative of the deflection function, Vx, is the slope function. The second derivative of the Vx is the moment function. The third derivative is the shear function. And the fourth derivative is the loading function. So that's summarized without these two equations or without the, uh, you know, I think these two on page 578 in the book. Now on page 579 we need to extend our sign conventions. Remember from the moment diagrams and moment equations and shear equations we were uh, given this sign convention that's consistent with everything else that we're doing. For a segment of a beam positive loading is up. Positive moment on the left side of the beam is clockwise. Positive moment on the right side of the beam, which I forgot to write in there, is counterclockwise. The shear is in this direction up on the left end of the beam, right down on the right end of the beam. Okay, the 
sign conventions that we want to add are if we measure x positive from the left end of the beam then the slope theta is considered positive if it goes counterclockwise and the deflection lowercase v is positive up so a deflection down is considered negative if I measure x from the right end of the beam it's positive then my slope changes and I consider positive slope to be counter I mean clockwise in that direction from the original axis line and once again positive deflection V is up okay so I'm going to develop these equations and integrate them to get to deflection but remember every time I integrate if I integrate my moment equation I'm going to introduce some constants that we'll see down here in this example in the examples in the book so I have to use boundary conditions or continuity conditions to evaluate those constants of integration and the common ones that we're going to use are at a pin or a roller support at the end of a beam the deflection is zero the moment is zero at a pin or a roller in the middle of the beam I can't say anything about my moment but I do know that my deflection will be equal to zero at a fixed end I have I have a moment but I have no deflection and I have no rotation no slope it starts off flat at a free end of a beam at a cantilevered end I would have a zero shear and a zero moment and an internal hinge I'll have a moment of zero at that point because a hinge can't have any moment look at page 580 for a prettier picture of that okay so let's do an example a simple beam I remember when I was a practicing structural engineer one thing I looked at was just a quickie check of the deflection of a a beam with a concentrated low was PL, PL cubed over 48EI. That number sticks in my brain because I used it a million times. So let's just take a beam of span L with a concentrated load P in the middle and it's pretty easy to draw an elastic curve for that one and it looks like kind of like that. So then I go back to cutting a section here and calculating my moment and my shear because I can do that very easily had a lot of practice of it six chapters ago and so my reaction at this left end is P over 2 I measure X from that end so here's my positive sign assumptions on the right end of a beam for moment and shear the equation for moment is P over 2 times X and that's positive so I, uh, I take the to get slope I integrate that function once so slope is a function of X is equal to the integral P over 2 times X DX evaluating that that comes out to be P over 2 times 2 X squared plus this constant okay I don't know what that constant is until I use a boundary condition for my elastic curve I can see that at x equals L over 2 which I've kind of drawn a little close up over here the slope by symmetry the slope of the elastic curve has got to be equal to 0 right there in the middle at L over 2 so I substitute that in here I say the slope this function of x is equal to zero the functions that but I want to plug in L over 2 for x here and so I get P over 4 L over 2 squared instead of x squared plus C1 and that's equal to zero slope at the center of the, at the L over 2 location rearranging that I get C1 this constant of integration is equal to negative PL squared over 8 so now I can write my equation and uh, 
My equation is this px squared over 4 minus my constant, which is pl squared over 8. I've kind of simplified everything by dropping out the 1 over ei. And that's, of course, assuming, which is 99.9% .9 of the case, where ei is constant over the length of the beam. So that's my equation for slope. Once again, I'm going to drop the ei out of it. I'm going to integrate this function, the slope function, one more time to get the deflection equation, which is the elastic curve. So it's the integral of this function px squared over 4 minus pl squared over 8 dx. Integrate that once and I get px cubed over 3 times 4 minus pl squared over 8 x plus another constant of integration. Okay, I have to evaluate that one. So looking at my elastic curve, I can see an easy uh, boundary condition is at x equals 0. My deflection is 0. So I set the equation equal to 0. Evaluate it. Looks like this. Put in 0 for x. Both these terms go to 0. Plus c2 is equal to 0. So c2 itself equals to 0. So now I know that my equation for deflection, my elastic curve, is, is this function. px cubed over 12 minus pl squ squared x over 8. Multiply the whole thing by 1 over ei. And so I want to check my memory. Was that memory correct for pl cubed over 48 ei? So at x equals l over 2, I substitute that into this equation, and I get that my deflection lowercase v is equal to p over 12 l over 2 cubed minus pl squared over 8 times l over 2 for that x there. Doing all the math I get pl cubed over 24 minus pl cubed over 16 common denominators I get sure enough negative that's good because it's down pl cubed over 48 ei.